Hello everyone, this is Adrian Bell, and in today's video, we will get to know about one of the most disturbing cases ever seen. June Richardson, a grieving mother that spent the last 45 years of her life coping with the tragic loss of her little boy, the four-year-old Martin Brown. June passed away due to lung cancer. During her final days, she said she was finally going to see her baby again. Martin Brown, her four-year-old son, a smiling, adorable little boy, was brutally murdered by another child who enticed him to play with her in an abandoned house where she decided to choke him to death. This crime happened on May 25, 1968, a day before the killer's 11th birthday. The child killer was the 10-year-old Mary Flora Bell. The crime happened in Scottswood, a district in the west end of Newcastle upon Tyne, England. The police found Martin's body in a deserted area, partially undressed. June and her entire family were traumatized by the horrible news. The atmosphere of sadness and grief at the family home was devastating. Meanwhile, June then had someone knocking at her door. Just before Martin was buried, they came to my house and asked if they could see him. And I knew that they knew he was dead. So I just looked like blank at them, you know. And I said to uh, the youngest of the two, Mary, she was littler than the other one. I said, wait, well, you can't see Martin Martin's dead. She says, oh, she says, I know he's dead. She says, I want to see him in his coffin. With that, I slammed the door in her, face, in her face and I just collapsed behind the door and my husband had to come get us and had to send for the doctor. As time went on, the police didn't get anywhere with the investigation and closed the case. Later, on July 31st of the same year, another child from the same village was gone. Brian Howe, a three-year-old boy that in the same way as Martin was lured to his death by the angelic-looking 11-year-old murderer. This time, Mary Bell was not alone. She had a friend, the 12-year-old Norma Bell. They were not relatives, but certainly partners in crime. A little before Brian's murder, both invaded a nursery in Scottswood and vandalized the place with the aggressive confessions of the killing of Martin Brown. But the police dismissed these clues, thinking that some delinquent was a scribbling nonsense and that it was not related to their investigation. This time, Mary Bell had gained experience and was more deliberate in her way of killing. She choked Brian to death, removed his private parts, and carved her initials onto his stomach. Norma helped her with everything. His body was found in a wasteland in the same area in Scottswood. A little before the murder of Martin Brown, Another child, a little girl named Pauline, managed to escape from Mary Bell's hands alive. Norma pinned us down and Mary had grabbed us by the neck and started like, strangling us. And then she was, had a hand here and she was getting the sand and then pouring at my mouth. And it couldn't go in quick enough and she tried to stuff her fingers down, basically, to go further down. And obviously I was terrified. And I think... Norma was a little bit frightened when she seen what Mary was doing because Norma jumped up and by that time she had jumped up and I managed to struggle and get free and run home. Unfortunately, after reporting the attack to the police, they did nothing about it. After Brian's murder, the police decided to reopen Martin Brown's case due to the similarities in both crimes. During their investigation, the police officers noticed the morbid interest of Mary Bell in their investigation, to the point that they decided to take her in for questioning. She denied any involvement with the case, but there was a witness, a nine-year-old boy that saw everything. Also, Mary Bell's teacher gave the police her diary in which she actually wrote about the crimes. With his testimony in the diary, the police took Mary and Norma Bell in for questioning, this time with evidence. Norma ended up confessing everything, while Mary Bell denied her involvement, blaming everything on her friend. 
The psychiatrists that evaluated both the girls say that it was clear that Maribel had all the traits of a psychopath, while Norma Bell seemed confused and manipulated. She had certain things that one felt were missing in her emotions. That was my impression. She was quite, uh, I'm not going to say hard, but she was impervious. She never, of course, admitted to having done any of these things. The other little girl was quite easy. She was relaxed. She was not very bright. I was very sorry for her. She had been entirely, I think, the lead one. The case got the attention of the world due to the young age and cruelty of the killer. Mary Bell was arrested in December 1968, tried and condemned for manslaughter on the grounds of diminished responsibility and placed in a secure home for children, while Norma Bell was released by the police. During her time in the child's secure home, Mary Bell received education, music lessons, support and psychological treatment. Mary Bell was released in 1980 at the age of 23. After having served 12 years, she was given a new identity. Years later, in 1984, she released a book in which she detailed all the physical, sexual and emotional violence she endured from her abusive family from a very early age. Her mother was a prostitute and according to Mary Bell, her mother's clients had been sexually abusing her since she was four years old. Some of her family members also said that her mother tried to kill her when she was a toddler. For her participation in this book about her life, she received over 50,000 pounds. Her victims' families could not believe that besides having their little ones brutally taken away from them, that their children's killer was not only free, but now profiting from their children's deaths. After the book's release, Mary Bell's home address and identity were discovered by the media. After that, her and her daughter went to court and were granted again the right to anonymity for life. The Prime Minister at the time, Mr. Blair, decided to take legal action to forbid criminals from profiting from their crimes. He gathered over 250,000 signatures, but unfortunately, nothing was ever done to change this travesty in England. The deaths of Martin Brown and Brian Howe have caused an everlasting change in the lives of their families. Most of the materials found online about this case are mostly about Mary Bell, not about Martin or Brian, or how what she did affected their families forever. Mary Bell became pregnant and gave birth to a child on May 25, 1984, exactly 16 years after she murdered Martin Brown. According to the Scotsman newspaper, John Richardson revealed that in an awful twist of fate, Bell's daughter was born on the anniversary of her son's death. Many people do not see Mary Bell as a victim, but many others sympathize with her and justify her actions based on her abusive childhood. While all of us will have different points of view and personal judgments on Mary Bell's case, we cannot forget the fact that Martin Brown and Brian Howe will never be able to tell the world what they think or feel about it, and their families are the ones dealing with this fact for the last 50 years. Those little boys will never come back, but their memories will never be forgotten. Thanks for watching.